one of the district in central Java that holds a million charms and has a lot of natural tourist attraction is Magelang. The city is also one of the oldest city in Indonesia and surrounded by five mountains at once that is Mount Merapi, Mount Merbabu, Mount Sumbing, Mount Telomoyo, and Mount Menoreh. In the middle of the city, there is even an iconic hill named Bukit Tidar. Workers, in this episode, I will invite you to explore the other side of this historical small city with me Chandra Praditya, and this is Sidewalk. Hi Walkers, now I'm standing in front of Bukit Tidar, which is known as Pakuning Tanah Jawa. That is because Bukit Tidar is believed to be located right in the center of Java Island with a shape similar to a nail head. This hill is one of the iconic places often visited by pilgrims to the tomb of Sesu Bahir. Well, I will explore the Megalang area starting from Bukit Tidar Valley and will walk along the suburbs to the city center. I'm Chandra Praditya, this is Sidewalk. From around Jalan Jenderal Sudirman, I walked to the Magersari. It's one of the villages around the Bukit Tidar Valley. This village is indeed densely populated and identical to the city center, such as public health center, bird market, culinary market, and of course second-hand market. The conditions here are always busy with buying and selling transactions all day. Apart from being affordable, this place is also a strategic location that makes it easier for people to reach them, either by private vehicles or public transportations. Among the central district, I interested visiting the second-hand market. Well, I would like to know what they are selling. Let's find out. Workers, this is second-hand market. It's a heaven for some people. And yes, I'm a used good lovers. I believe recycling used items is a way to protect our earth from disaster. Some of this stuff are still working fine. And yes, it's kind of giving a second life to use items. Because someone's dress is another man's treasure. Let's have a chit chat with some sellers. Permisi Pak. Sorry Pak. Dengan Pak siapa? Pak Sarianto. Oh Pak Sarianto. Saya Chandra Pak. Pak boleh ngobrol-ngobrol sedikit nggak Pak? Ya bisa. Ya. Bapak bisa jelasin sedikit Pak tentang pasar ini itu sebenarnya pasar apa sih Pak? Ini dulu sejarahnya pasar stres namanya dulu. Oh. Ya, eh, pada tahun 2000 an dia berdiri di belakang pecinan pabrik es dulu. Hmm. Nah, sekarang ditempatkan oleh pemerintah di sini sehingga menjadi pasar Sidomuki satu. Kok bisa namanya pasar stres ya pak? Gimana itu ceritanya itu? Karena dulu pasar stres itu belum kelompok orang yang uh, di PHK mas. Oh. Nah, di PHK dari Armada, dari Jakarta, berkumpul jadi satu. Iya. Yeah. Untuk mengais rezeki bersama dan uh, berjualan di tempat pabrik es itu sepanjang jalan di atas kali. Hmm. Berjejer-jejer dengan seadanya. Misalkan alat rumah tangga, hmm. alat perkutangan, underdeal, underdeal bekas seperti ini. Hmm. Barang-barang bekas seperti ini yang sudah tidak terpakai di rumah, 
hmm. itu bisa dijual dan ditata di pasar itu orang menamakan kelompok ini menamakan pasar stres pasar stres ya Pak. karena tidak ada pekerjaan dan ah. juga e, mengambil inisiatif untuk berjualan bersama oh gitu jadi Awalnya dari yang orang-orang yang kena PHK Maaf, itu ya. tadi, kemudian menjual apapun yang bisa dijual ya Pak ya. Ah, gitu. Nah Bapak, Pak Sar sendiri itu di sini berjualan sudah sejak berapa lama Pak? Saya sudah mulai dari tahun 2000. Tahun 2000? Pindah ke sini 2004. Kemudian Pak, dari banyaknya spare part-spare part bekas ini, Uh, pernah nggak ada cerita mungkin Bapak bisa menjual sampai mahal gitu? Pernah nggak, Pak? Juga pernah, tapi juga uh, apa barangnya itu kami tidak tahu kalau barang itu mahal. Oh gitu ya? Kita tidak tahu, kita tuju, apa belinya cuma sedikit. Hmm. Ya, cuma, uh, padanya dan kita tidak tahu barang itu. Ya, tapi bisa laku, ya bisa 200% atau 300% dari menjadi barang itu jadi berkesan di sini barang kelihatan tidak pernah akan tapi berguna untuk motor-motor besar itu yang saya alam. Bapak terima kasih banyak atas semua ceritanya kita jadi tahu his, nilai historis dari pasar ini dari sebelumnya di mana tadi di pasar stres semoga sukses Pak saya mau lanjut lagi. Iya. Mari pasar. Iya. Walkers, it turns out that there are lots of items that are still worthy. Stuff that considered as trash for some people is priceless for others. Before the day goes by, I will invite you to look for traditional specialties. Let's follow my journey to Pasar Besar. Though it's only for a short time, but I'm happy to find a second-hand market that can support the needs of the market's economy. The life of the people in town is very diverse. You really have a lot of choice. I always visited shop after shop, which was lined up neatly on Eagle Street. Before I got to the market, I found a big cemetery gate as a sign that there is a Dutch cemetery in this area. People used to call it Kirkhoff. I stopped at a small door that reads Paf van der Ster Complex. I looked at it and wanted to know what's in it. Apparently, in the inside there is a tomb of a humanitarian figure from the Netherlands named Johannes van der Ster. This tomb is still being cared for and it's quite clean. Well, it seems there is a caretaker. Maybe he can tell me the stories about this cemetery. Selamat siang Bapak. Oh iya, selamat siang Mas. Ya, ya Pak, mohon maaf oh, ganggu ya. waktunya sebentar. Oh, ya, ya, ya. Saya Chandra Pak dari oh, ya. Sidewalk. Nah ya. kita itu lagi jalan-jalan di Magelang. Kebetulan tadi lihat di pinggir jalan ini kok ada kompleks pemakaman ya, gitu. Ya. Nah kira-kira boleh tahu nggak Pak sedikit tentang pemakaman boleh. ini? Boleh. Saya ke situ ya oh, Pak, ya, boleh, kita boleh, sambil ngobrol-ngobrol ya, ya Pak. Ya, ya. Nah, Pak, ya. jadi... Sebenarnya ini pemaka, kompleks pemakaman siapa sih Pak? Ya, jadi ini kompleks pemakaman dari tokoh kemanusiaan namanya Johannes van der Stur. Nah, jadi beliau ini adalah uh, seorang penginjil dari negeri Belanda uh, yang lahir tahun 1865. Kebetulan beliau datang ke Megelang tahun 1892. Uh, misi awalnya sebenarnya ingin uh, beliau ini memberikan semacam uh, bimbingan bagi tentara-tentara Belanda yang ada di Megelang. Di masa itu, uh, beliau uh, semacam mendapat sebuah dorongan untuk memelihara anak-anak terlantar uh, yang ada di sekitar wilayah tangsi militer Belanda itu. Awalnya, uh, beliau meramat empat orang anak. Lalu pada tahun 1893, uh, bertambah menjadi 11 anak dan dia mendirikan sebuah panti asuhan namanya Oranya Nassau. Dan dalam rentang waktu uh, Sampai tahun 1942, panti aswanya itu memelihara sekitar 1.100 anak. Nah, 
pada tahun 1945 beliau meninggal setelah diinternir oleh Jepang di Cimahi. Nah, e, karena kondisi waktu itu kondisi beliau ma, sudah sangat e, tua, lalu dari Cimahi dipindahkan ke Semarang, di Semarang bawa ke Megelang. Nah, pada tanggal 16 September 1945 beliau meninggal dan inilah makam beliau. Oh, gitu. Ya. Jadi kompleks ini sendiri didirikan ketika 1945 itu ya? Ketika nah, setelah beliau meninggal atau gimana? Uh, jadi dulu kawasan besar ini adalah uh, pemakaman bagi orang-orang Nasrani gitu. yang ada di Megelang uh, diperkirakan dibangun sekitar seri, tahun 1900. Nah luasnya kira-kira 9 hektar, tapi pada tahun 1945, mohon maaf, tahun pada tahun 1985 pemerintah Kota Megelang uh, merelokasi pemakaman ini ke wilayah yang namanya Taman Pemakaman Umum Giri Loyo. Tetapi eh, pihak keluarga dari eh, Johannes van der Stor ini berupaya untuk mempertahankan komplek pemakaman ini. Eh, sehingga eh, pemakaman ini masih bisa kita saksikan hingga sekarang ini. Ada sekitar eh, 25 eh, pemakaman, makam nisan-nisan ini eh, yang berisi sekitar ya mungkin ada 40-an lebih jenazah yang ada di masih ada di sini. Gitu. The Walkers, the orphanage of Orange Nassau that was built by the evangelist Mr. Johannes van der Ster, was established around 1893 and the 9 acre of the cemetery of Johannes van der Ster was established around 1945. In 1985, the local government was relocated most of this tomb to Giriloyo Cemetery, the biggest cemetery in Magelang, and families of Johannes van der Ster was asked the government to keep the rest of the cemetery to be left here. Now, this is something unique to me. Who would have thought that there is an old cemetery behind a shopping center in downtown Magelang? Well, after listening to the explanation of Mr. Bagus, we finally understand the history behind this cemetery. Walkers, this journey is not over yet because I will still continue to look for traditional specialties. Of course, only on sidewalk. Pak Bagus, terima kasih banyak atas yeah. waktunya. Yeah. Okay. Saya langsung okay. lagi ya, yeah. Pak. Semoga sukses dengan yeah. kegiatannya. Yeah. Mari Bapak, ya, selamat siang. Ya, selamat siang, Mas. From Ikla Street, I continue to walk on clean and tidy sidewalk. The conditions of the small and beautiful city of Magla allows us to travel to get to know about the historical city better. Then I cross to the Pasar Rejo Winang on Magla. It's the biggest city market with variety of goods. Magelang citizens used to buy various basic needs such as clothing and food at an affordable price. Then I walk along the edge of the market and look for traditional culinary that can't be found in other cities. Workers, we are at Pasar Rejo Winangun. This is the biggest market in Magelang. Well, I can see right here there is a big sign of Getuk Gondok Haja Sri Rahayu. As far as I know, Getuk is a traditional treat. I wonder what's the difference between this Getuk and another? Let's find out and ask the owners. Permisi Bapak. Bapak, mohon maaf mengganggu waktunya sebentar. Lagi apa ini Bapak? Oh, banyak banget. Ini apa nih Pak? Kelepon. Oh, boleh tanya-tanya sedikit nggak Bapak? The shop that I visited this time sells getuk with attractive colors. The combinations of brown and white, full brown, green and pink makes the getuk seems good to serve as a dish for important guests. The snake is made of cassava which is rich in carbohydrates, so it can make us full by eating it. It is also suitable to be eaten along with hot tea or coffee. Boleh kenalan Pak, dengan ya. Bapak siapa? Saya Lili. Pak Lili, oh, oh, saya Chandra ya. Bapak. Nah Pak, saya nah. mau ini ini makanan apa nih Pak? Mungkin bisa dijelasin sedikit ke ini kita Pak. Ini makanan khas Magelang. Makanan khas Magelang. Khas Magelang. Getuk. Namanya Getuk. Getuk. Kalau signaturnya Bapak yang paling terkenal di sini, Getuknya yang apa? Getuknya ya ini. Ini, ini yang jenisnya ya. Jenisnya. Ah. Pak, boleh nggak saya pesan satu kotak gitu? bisa kira-kira yang apa kan, ya, rekomendasinya kotak ada yang 10.000, 15.000, 20.000, 25.000 komplit semua cuman porsinya yang ya, membedakan oh, ah. boleh kita lihat pak mungkin pak isiannya apa oh, iya. pak? ini yang 20 oh ya. yang 20 ah. yang 20 udah komplit isinya apa aja ini pak 
Gaduk ori. Oh, gaduk ori. ori. Ya. Ini yang pelangi, gula jawa, hmm. rasa pram, uh, aroma prambor sama pandan. Aroma prambor sama pandan. Kalau yang coklat ini, hmm. gula merah. Oh ini gula merah. Gula merah. Ya. Kalau yang ini coklatnya Van Houten. Nah Bapak, kalau Bapak berjalan di pasar Rejo Winangun ini, apakah sudah lama dari pakai nenek dulu atau pindah-pindah sebelumnya Pak? Gitu. Kalau dulu, dulu kita dulu jual di depan toko Mas, depan toko Mas Lombetan, depan toko apa itu Panorama. 2015 kita pindah ke sini. Perbedaan ya. getuknya yang original sama apa? Mesin itu di hmm. apanya Pak tadi? Perbedaannya? Ini masih ras, rasa ketelanya masih kental sekali. Sebetulnya ini ra, namanya itu getuk mawur. Getuk, getuk mawur. mawur sebetulnya. Mm -hmm. Tapi orang-orang menyebutnya getuk gondok. So this this is called getuk gondok, which originally name as getuk mawur ya Bapak. Yeah. Nah Bapak mungkin saya boleh bungkusin satu kotak untuk oh, orang oleh yes. yang di rumah Bapak. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Bapak nih silakan. Oh, uangnya. Yeah. Mm. What is? It turns out the the price is quite affordable. And for those of you who came to Magelang, you can come here and visit the Getuk Gondok Hajah Sri Rahayu yeah. at Pasar Rejo Winangun and taste the sweetness of the street. Nah, Bapak, saya mau pamit dulu. Mau lanjut lagi ke tempat yang lain. Terima oh, kasih banyak yeah. atas waktunya. Yeah. Yeah. Sama. Ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, Bapak, terima kasih banyak Bapak atas yeah. waktunya. Mari. Sama. Getuk Gondok Sri Rahayu still maintains the traditional way in the making and does not use any preservatives or artificial sweetener. This aims to keep the consistent quality and taste since the beginning. Therefore, Getuk Gondok can only last for two days. If you want to buy this Getuk, you can visit the Pasar Raja Winangun Magelang because the stall is open from 8 to 5 p.m. I'm sure with so many customers coming, this getup has sweet and soft taste which makes people want to eat more. Workers, we've been talking to Mr. Lili as about the history of Getuk Gondok Hajah Sri Rahayu. Now, I would like to spend my day to the next destination. Shall we go around the area of Magelang Square? To get to Magelang Square, I have to pass through the Chinatown area. This Chinatown is also the main residential area for Chinese business, which is also the center of the city economy. This area is now crowded with shops selling various necessities such as electronics, clothes, stationery, tea pharmacy that sells herbal medicine. Interestingly, the building here still maintains the architectural style of the early 1900s. Even some of the buildings have an art deco style that is simple and really emphasize the aesthetic side, which brings quite modern atmosphere and high artistic taste in Maglang City at that time. After walking to enjoy the Chinatown Square, I arrive at Leong Hok Pyo Temple. History recorded that this temple was founded in 1864 by Captain B. Coen V, a healthy merchant from Solo City. Workers, this temple is the oldest in Magelang, and this is a house of worship for Chinese. One of the prominent features in this temple is a super large geo container. 
It is said that this Yulu is the biggest around Southeast Asia. I wonder what's in there. Come follow me. Leonghok Bio Temple is a Magellan community pride, which become the witness of the Chinese community struggle to participate in the fight against the Dutch colonialists during the Java War led by the Prince Diponegoro. The locations of this temple is on Alun Alun Selatan Street, number no. two, Magellan City, and the building is still intact, with only a few parts have been renovated. As soon as I entered the temple, I was very amazed because I saw an intense stick called Hiolu that has weight 3.8 tons and a diameter of 178 centimeters and a height of 158 centimeters. Now, Leonghok Bio Temple is also a place to practice wuzu, lion dance, and a gathering place for Chinese cultural possessions. Today it's getting darker. I felt safe and peace knowing that Magalang is a city with high tolerance in diversity. Workers have been taking you all day long to explore the beautiful city of Magala. This city is worth a stopover since it's an orderly and neat small city. I have to say goodbye now. I'll see you on the next episode of Sidewalk. Of course, only with me, Chandra Praditya. See ya!